with our 2024 first round mock draft, we have landed at pick number 19. This is where the Toronto Raptors will be selecting very likely in the first round of the draft. So of the players available, what is the direction that the Toronto Raptors should be going with this selection? We are back at it again on Amateur Hour Clips, where we continue to provide you with Toronto Raptors news coverage and analysis. But over on this channel, we take the best highlights and segments from the main channel, Amateur Hour Sports, where we do live streams covering the Raptors even further and put them on this channel to make it a whole lot easier for you to consume the content. If you like what you see from this video today, make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we're always dropping content over here that you're not going to want to miss out on, especially if you are a Toronto Raptors fan. And also along the way, it really does support the channel if you smash that like button. Now, let's get back to the video. Well, there's a number of ways the Raps can approach this one. They can definitely look to bolster the center position, bolster the depth over there. With Jakob Pertl and Kelly Olynyk on the team, they've got two good centers, but they don't really have a lot of they don't really have a lot of rim protection coming off the bench, especially if Jakob Pertl's injured. That was apparent last season when Jakob Pertl was, in fact, injured. They don't have that third center. But they also may feel as though they need to go with a center who's more so on perhaps the timeline of Scotty Barnes, RJ Baird, and Mano Quickly. Not as bought into that theory because Jakob Pertl's 28. It's not like he's like a grandpa compared to these other players. But... A lot of people have suggested the Raptors do go for a center in this spot, but I don't think this is where Masai Jiri does go for a center. What I have been pretty adamant on for a while with the 19th overall pick is the Raptors going for a backup point guard who does have the ability to scale up to be a starter down the line. And the way I've laid out the mock draft here, the there is a player that kind of fits a lot of the boxes that I want to tick for the Raptors in the 19th overall spot. So, if the Raptors want to go in a different direction, Khalil Ware would be my center. Keep an eye on Eves Massey, for sure. If the Raptors want to go in a different direction, more so in line with what they've done in the past, they want to go with a forward here who brings size, switchability, athleticism. A lot of mock drafts right now of Keyshawn George going to the Raptors at ninth overall. While I don't dislike that pick, nor would I overall dislike going for a Khalil Ware in this spot, I've just grown to be really fond of you know, bigger point guards. And if I can't have Devin Carter because now he's way too popular, then I can have somebody who brings a lot of upside and we have the patience to see where that goes in Carlton Carrington to the Raptors with the 19th overall pick. And I think for Carlton Carrington, what is so mesmerizing in a way to me is is the size mixed with the comfortability and confidence on the ball mixed with the pull-up threat and overall just quality point guard play it's just something that this Toronto Raptors team has been missing and I don't think Carrington at all is going to be somebody who's affecting the Raptors from day one but we got to be patient with this team. We got to be honest with ourselves as Raptors fans and know that this is going to be a bit of a project here. This is not going to be a day one sort of player. And this is not going to be a day one sort of team. We're not going to come out the gates likely and be a playoff team out of nowhere. So we can have the patience to go for a guy like Carlton Carrington, who I firmly believe has the upside to really affect this team going forward. It might take a bit more time like it did with Grady Dick out the gate. It might take a little bit more time. But he's six foot five in shoes, great size, six foot eight wingspan, not even going to be 19 years old at the time of the NBA draft, and has just shown a great degree of comfortability in his first season of college basketball, scoring almost 14 points per game, hauling in five rebounds, four assists. Look, it's not the most efficient play, but efficiency comes with age. He's just got the smarts to play in the point guard spot. He's got the ability to create his own shots. And as the Raptors work with this guy and fine-tune his abilities, there is a really, really good player here. One of the issues will be it's going to be a lower floor than some other guys. It's, it's not a safe pick by any means. But there is a lot to work with that I think the Raptors can have a great degree in confidence, a, a great degree of confidence in. His main 
trade as you will on the floor is his shot making and knows how to get that shot. Some of it can be maybe a little bit reliant on mid range, but he's such a smooth operator in those areas that I think that you can move that jump shot further back to be a much bigger threat from three. I mean, like, look, he's already shooting 32% from three as an 18 year old. If we can, you know, work with his game and work with that already present jump shot and get it behind the three point line, there should be some confidence that this player can be extraordinarily effective for the NBA level. He's showing great flashes of playmaking. He's already a good ball handler. He's already super confident. This guy's got the ability to be a triple-double threat on a night-to-night basis who uses his good frame to keep players in front of him. There are some things he's going to have to work on in this position. You know, we see the efficiency, and that could raise a little bit of alarms, but I've tried to clear up that so far. But even though he's not the most athletic guy, he does keep players in front of him. He has the good size, and I think that size makes you confident enough that he can play next to Emmanuel quickly as well. You could have Emmanuel quickly maybe a little bit more off-ball in some settings as like a two-guard on offense, and you're not sacrificing too much size here because Carrington is six foot five and has that six foot eight wingspan. Because I think for a bit of a worry Raptors fans have for a guard, and a bit of a worry that I have as well, is if you do go for a point guard, like... You know, if you're higher up, you go for a guy like Rob Dillingham, a guy I really like. You're still you're sacrificing a lot of size there because in an event where you know you get the upside you're looking for with this point guard and you maybe want to start starting him next to quickly, you just don't have a lot of size there. That's not going to be the case here for Carlton Carrington. So the upside I really like and the fit I really like and with just so much talent and such a good base of talent to work with, I think that this is something the Raptors should be very keen on wanting to work with and wanting to develop in their system. And maybe that's going to cost half a season in the G League, but I think it works out really well for Carlton Carrington where he's not going to be going a lot later in the first round, but where he's going to have to be a bit more patient for his opportunities. The Raptors can give him the platform to get playtime and get reps from day one and therefore be effective more effective in the longer term. The situation makes sense for him. The situation makes sense for the Raptors. I definitely want to go Carlton Carrington if he's available at 19th overall, given the mock draft that we have so far. You know, there's other guys that I would certainly consider here. Uh, you know, if Tristan Da Silva starts to fall, definitely would look at Tristan Da Silva in this spot. I think there's an outside chance Jared McCain falls here. I, I think there's a realistic chance Jacoby Walter falls to, thir- falls to the 19th overall pick. But Carlton Carrington is my guy here. If not, a guy like Tyre Colic as well, uh, who I have 20th overall to the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's another player that I would be interested in, but I, I think that Carrington brings a little bit too much upside to ignore at 19th overall. 